Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Faithful Ratters and today we'll be talking about the carrier method. <laughs> I thought I would make a more informative video about the carrier method. I have in the past made a video about my first experience using the carrier method and how it works and all that sort of stuff, but I thought I'd do a more in-depth video. There is also some good videos that I will recommend to you. There is two Asami Rats videos about the carrier method, and I think Emiology has a couple about the carrier method as well. So I really do recommend watching those two. I'm not an expert, but I do have quite a lot of experience of easy intros and difficult intros and middle of the ground intros. And yeah, and I wanted to impart some of the knowledge that I've learned as well. So yes, don't just take just my word for it, obviously though, and obviously do more research than just this video. But these are some of the things that I find is important to share about the carrier method. So the first thing being the reason why I recommend and choose to do the carrier method and why this is the preferred method of introductions for rats in the UK and in some other countries. The main reason for this is this thought process over a higher amount of stress for a shorter amount of time or a lower amount of stress for a longer amount of time. Now, I don't feel that most cases benefit from stress that's drawn out. Stress that's over within a couple of days is much better than weeks and months of stress, which are the methods like neutral space where you put them apart and you take them away again, you put them apart and you take them away again, um, and other methods like that. I don't find for most rats that works very well and that it's very fair to keep putting them apart and putting them back together again. This is Tushy, my little Tush, out, my little Tush monster who's now nibbling on my nails. Um, as you can see, I got new kittens and successfully just did carrier methods intros and it was like the smoothest intros I've done in my entire life and it was friggin' wonderful. Especially this tiny little guy who's tiny, but he is mighty. Hi, Benny. So, I'm getting distracted by the rats. So, also there's other methods such as like scent swapping and cages next to each other that add enormous amounts of stress on top of the already stressful thing that is a rat meeting another rat. This isn't something that we can avoid entirely. We cannot avoid like stress at all during intros. Like intros are stressful, but we can reduce it and we can make it easier to deal with. So scent swapping and having cages next to each other all this does is have the rats know that there's other rats around without having the ability to be able to meet them and meet and form a relationship and like sort out hierarchies and things like that. So if you're giving your rats the opportunity to smell the rats without the opportunity to actually meet them, this is just causing a lot of stress and builds up frustration that when they actually do meet, you might have a bloodbath. And these like are the, the main reasons why I recommend carrying method over other methods. Rats also are less prone to fighting and having injuries in when they start in a smaller space. The more space you give them means the further they can run. So they're more likely to fight because in big spaces they can run away. They don't particularly like to fight in small places if at all possible, you know, because they won't be able to get away. And a lot of injuries that rats get from intros or from fighting is from the running away part, not necessarily the actual fighting because they can get even worse injuries from running away because a rat will like bite onto their skin and then when they pull to run away, it makes them a bigger injury than would happen before. So that's the reasons why I recommend the carrier method over the other types of methods. I think there is a time and a place for neutral space introductions and technically the carrier method is neutral space introductions, but I don't think it's necessary and right for most cases and I think carrier method is the best option for most rats in most cases and so that's the one that you should go to first and if you need to adapt it for any particular reasons like a particularly nervous rat or something like that then that's something to think about later on and after you're a little bit more experienced or you've talked to more experienced people I don't think going into it and like deciding to change all of the rules of the carrier method you first go around is really the best. So now we will talk about the different stages and the different sort of like 
steps of carrier method. So the premise of the carrier method is that you have the rats meet in, you guessed it, a carrier or a carrier sized um, thing. So this is the like typical size for a small pet carrier that you'll probably use with rats. It sort of looks like this. And this is an appropriate sized enclosure this is an appropriate sized step one for I would say around five adult males maybe a couple of more females but this is will be very crowded if you have larger groups or if you have larger rats so the premise of the carrier method isn't that you use a specific cage for each steps is that you're using one with a specific relative size to the animals. So I'm going to share with you the cages that I've used for my most, most recent intros, which was two adult and two kitten books. And these were the correct sized cages for that. You ideally, you want to start in, in, in a space that's small enough that they can't avoid each other, but it's large enough that they can all comfortably lay down. But you don't want to give them a lot of space around them because you want them to have that contact you might want to start with a regular small pet carrier most people will have one of these if you have rats you should have a carrier so some people as the carrier would start i'd say some people will use a carrier another option which has makes for some very funny photos is a show tank so if you show you will have most people will have a couple of these laying around and this is a similar size to the carrier, um, but it just gives us a better visual of what's going on, which is helpful for reading behavior. I'm not an expert at all in rat behavior, but I am an expert in my rat's behavior and being able to see them whilst they interact is, a, is very helpful. And in a show tank, you can see that without being like standing over them, which is why I think a lot of people prefer to use a show tank rather than a um, carrier but if obviously if you don't have a show tank then you won't be using a show tank but yeah so this was where we started when we had just the four of them and then as you move up each of the stages you want to increase the space by about double depending on how the rats are going so then you've got to have enough different sized cages to make this possible. Now there are some ways where you can like alter cages sort of like putting cardboard or some other sort of barrier to separate like a smaller section of a cage but it, it's much better if you can just have a cage that is an appropriate size. So this cage is what we used for the next stage. This is almost I mean it's just less than double the space in the show tank I like this for the first um stage with a slightly larger group but I also like it for the first night um in a slightly smaller group because it is very small still but it has ventilation which show tanks and carries don't have very good ventilation and it just gives them a little bit you know, you can add a, a water bottle more easily and things like that. So this is what we used for stage two. And then we progressed to a slightly larger hamster cage, which looks like this. Ow, my hair. I think they were biting me. Um, if I just twist this a little bit, you can see. You can also see my little bit. Um... This cage is slightly larger. Now this may be a, st a size for a stage two in a slightly large group. But yeah, so this is the Pets at Home large hamster cage. I apologize that other one, I really don't know. Um, it has Cooper on it, but it I don't, I don't even know. I got that on second hand, I don't know where that's from. But yeah, so this is, I think, the extra large hamster cage. I may say this in quotations. Hamster cage from <laughs> Pets at Home. But yeah, so that is the next stage. Then, oh, the next stage after that is something like an Alaska, which is 
another hamster cage but is obviously as you can see a lot bigger and there's a lot more room there's a lot more room to climb which is something you want to avoid in the first stages because this allows rats to like jump on top of each other and things like that and obviously that is something you want to avoid during intros but yeah so this is an alaska this is a great sort of stage three for um most size groups actually unless you've got like more than 12 or something like that this might actually be a stage two but this is an alaska i really recommend that any rat owners have one of these cages for intros for when you have kittens that are not quite ready to be introduced to your adults um, there's many uses for an Alaska cage. Obviously, it's not big enough for a permanent residence for a group of adult rats, but it's a very helpful and useful cage to have. Um, I know a lot of breeders use them as maternity cages and use them when the kittens grow up a little bit, but an Alaska is a very good cage to have, and you can find them quite cheaply on the second-hand selling sites and places like Rat Stuff for Sale UK on Facebook. So, yeah, this is the stage i would say and then after that it's time to modify the space in their big cage so again if your big cage is about double the size of the alaska then you can put them into that and just as things progress then you progress and the thing about carrier method is every time you go up a stage you want to be having a clean fresh empty cage with just the bedding and um the food and the water bowls you don't want to have any things in there because this can cause rats to obviously fight over those things so before moving them up a stage you need to first of all have seen how they deal with different things like hammocks and toys and ropes and things like that in the smaller cages this is obviously a lot more difficult to add in stuff when there's like not a lot of space i would first start adding in like a flat hammock in a hamster cage and in, in, in like a in this this blue hamster cage and then when it gets to the alaska you can add in more things like hammocks and ropes and things like that but before moving up a stage you want them to be comfortable with each other and comfortable with what the hierarchy now looks like so there's a couple of ways that you can see this by behavior one of them is sleeping in like one big rat pile or mixed piles with like the different rats that you're introducing especially in the summer you might not see a rat pile with everybody in it because it might be too hot but if you're seeing all rats sleeping with all rats but interchangeably that's also like an appropriate rat pile you also want them to have positive social behaviors whilst awake you don't want to just have them sleeping together because they will sleep together even if they're not particularly fans of each other you want to make sure that while they're awake they're grooming each other positively that displays of dominance aren't aggressive it is normal especially in intros for rats to show dominance by pinning but you want to avoid the aggression. When there's aggression, that's where there's a problem. Aggression can also be because a rat won't submit, and you, there's a lot of specific behavioral things that can happen, which I'm not an expert, and I've not experienced all of those things, but I have experienced rats who don't take, don't submit properly, which can cause problems. Rats who, when they're met with a rat that doesn't submit to them as they want them to can become aggressive and also just very very nervous rats who overreact about everything which will cause fights because they're because they're not submitting because they're being crazy and like screaming and things like that so all of those things all those troubleshooting things i'm really not like an expert in any of that i'm not like that experienced however you want to be making sure that before you move up a stage and before you add in anything that they're being positive that they're, that they're showing positive behaviors whilst awake and that they're sleeping in mixed piles and eventually you'll get to a point where, where they can just go into their main cage and enjoy living a life and that's the main goal we don't want to drag out intros longer than they need to be but we also don't want to rush them so it's having that experience is being able to find the balance between having intros that last 
long 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 time and intros that are rushed that will create unstable group dynamics so some things in my experience that i think are helpful to share is i had one rat who passed away during intros now it wasn't intro related but i found that moving the rats out of that cage where that rat was helped them with the grieving process and that they didn't actually seem to miss him all that much which sounds really bad but it meant that they weren't as affected by it and i think a lot of that was to do with after he passed away i moved them up a stage even though i don't know whether they were ready to be moved up a stage but i wanted to get them out of that environment and they did very well you can also use a carrier method to re-intro rats after a neuter or when the group dynamics just seem to be a bit more tense and a little bit more dramatic than normal and it works in the exact same way and i've done this a couple of times i will say though that a lot of people will try re-intros and re-intros and re-intros and sometimes this will fix the problem if it's just like a little bit of a hierarchy debate i mean in the groups but a lot of the times in these cases where people are doing reintros after reintros after reintros either the group is just not supposed to be together like this particular configuration of rats or there's somebody in that group that has you know things that need to be addressed like behavior issues that need to be addressed my experience with these intros that i've just done was so good they were all really well behaved the babies submitted when they needed to to and showed their capabilities when they needed to and we were finished intros and i want to say four or five days and that's the time frame that you want to be aiming for you don't want your intros to be taking weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks but you also don't want your intros to have taken just one day if those rats are not ready for that in some cases especially in breeders who have like all related rats and they have a very similar temperament you can probably get away with much shorter intros than if you're inexperienced i do think it's much better to delay moving them up a stage if you're not sure than it would be to rush into like moving them up however do be careful that you aren't dragging out the intros to be too long because in some cases this isn't going to affect the outcome it's just going to prolong the fact that this group doesn't gel so i've mentioned everything that i wanted to if you have any more questions about the carrier method do let me know in the comments also check out those videos i'll have them linked in the description or maybe somewhere on screen from Asamu and from emiology and yeah that's carrier method oh someone's winning i think it's benson Oh, good boy. Um, trying to get male rats to use a wheel is difficult. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in another one. Bye! Bye.